Hi, this is Dr. Nikki. Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to be giving you a quick tip for my new book, Problem Solving in Action, Grades K-2. to We're going to be talking about part, part, whole problems. I use a lot of counters. I love counters. These happen to be C counters. Um, I make up counters. I buy counters. I have tons of counters. And so here's an example of a part, part, whole problem with the ocean counters. Um, so you tell the a part, part, whole problem you have two parts or three parts or four parts or however many parts. So to start with, I have three octopi and two lobsters. And the question is, how many animals do I have all together? So it's a part and a part, and the kids have to tell me what the whole is. I could change the problem and say, you know, I have, um, one octopus and two seahorses. How many animals do I have all together? I could say I have one octopus, two seahorses, and one seal. How many animals do I have all together? I could say we were at the aquar aquarium and inside of the aquarium there was one seal sitting on a rock, two starfish swimming, and one octopus deep down below. How many animals were there all together? Remember, in first grade, you start telling problems with three add-ins. Um, and so, you know, if you have counters and you give kids context, it's just easier for them to do. So part, part, whole, there you go. Now, there's a different kind of part, part, whole, and this is where you don't know one of the parts. So I could say there were two seahorses and there were, um, there were four animals all together and two were seahorses and the rest were lobsters. How many lobsters were there? And so the kids then have to know, oh, there was two lobsters because there's four animals all together and two were seahorses and then the rest were lobsters. So the other animals, the other animals were lobsters and there was two of them because two and two make four, right? So that's a part, part, whole problem. Now, so we have looked at a part, part, whole problem where you know both of the parts, a part, part, whole problem where you know one of the parts, or there's the part, part, whole problem where you don't know either one of the parts. Both add-ins are unknown. And I've set this up so you can see what this looks like. You might say to the kids, in the um, tree, there are some birds. There's four birds. And some are red and some are white. And there doesn't have to be... Um, one of each kind. It can be all red, all white. It can be different combinations. So then you have the kids set it up. And then the kids say, oh, there could be four red, or there could be three red and one white, or there could be two red and two white, or there could be one red and three white, or there could be four white and no red. And along here, you know, depending on the grade, I would have them write the table. Four red, zero white, three red, one white, two red, two white, one red, three white, zero red, four white. And so the kids can see that, and then they see the abstract representation of that. And the question is, what are all the possible combinations? That's a both add-ins unknown problem. It's a kindergarten problem in many common core states. In um, Texas, it's not really a kindergarten problem. Most states, most other states, rather than the common core, teach it in first grade. And it depends on your state standards, because a lot of people have their own state core, which has a little bit nuanced differences with the common core. So um, it just depends on what your state is, but the both add-ins and an unknown problem is a type of problem taught in either kindergarten or first grade. Um, so there's three types of part, part, whole problems. One, where you know both parts. One, where you don't know either part, and one where you know one of the parts, right? So um, that's a little bit of a tip on how to teach those problem types. I hope to see you next time. Thank you for joining me for this quick tip. And be sure to get the book. The book has lots of tips um, and some really good examples of how to teach problem solving for um, young children. Thank you for joining me. Happy mathing.